Uh, yes, we all have questions. All right, when we talked to Brian Borman earlier, he sort of said he wasn't sure if you guys were going to have a go-to pass rusher at the end of last year. Have you seen anyone emerge to fill that role so far? I think he'll be by committee. I think Hayden Hatcher, he's a guy that's been around. He, he's a fast, athletic kid. Um, Austin Booker does a great job, too. So it's uh, Lonnie was a little bit different last year with, with some of his skill sets. But I think we've got some length this year, and that can be effective in the pass rush. So I think kind of by committee. Jeremy does a great job. So we, we have some guys that can get the job done. We also heard a little bit about how some linebackers are getting work pass rushing off the edge. How does that kind of affect your guys and, I guess, how you prepare them? Oh, it just gives us more versatility with, with, with things that we're going to do defensively, schematic, schematically that I don't want to necessarily reveal right now. But uh, that's that helps our defense. It's trying to put the fastest, most athletic guys on the field. And uh, we've got guys that can do that also in our room. Something Lance talked about and you mentioned there was length. How much does that help for what you guys do if just schematically? Yeah, it helps a lot because obviously, you know, everything we do defensively, it's about creating separation. And when you have a long wingspan and you have some height on you, you can create separation and get off blocks. And that's part of pass rushing, too, is being able to see and and not always have to run around blocks, which sometimes creates vertical rush lanes for defenders. So our goal first is to stop the run and then use our, our length and our size can help us do that. With Austin, when you guys went to go in the portal and you first saw him, what were some of the things that stood out to you about what you saw in him on film? Yeah, he, he his length and his athleticism with his length. Usually you don't get a guy that's 6'6 and can run. We call him a baby deer. He, he can really open up and run. So a guy that long that can change direction in small area and still has that short area quickness, that's that's hard to find. And with him, you know, he's been doing a great job. He's kind of a throwback, old school, really tough kid that doesn't say a whole lot, but shows up every day and definitely excited about him. And has he surpassed maybe your expectations of when he first got here? Yeah, it, it's how, how things you typically work. He came here in the spring. He was spinning a little bit, trying to figure out the defense and really hard on himself and just going through spring ball, going through the summer, and now transitioning into fall camp. He's really picked up the playbook and now he, he's, he's really rising. So really excited about him. What about Patrick Joyner? Patrick, yeah, so he, he was, Patrick's been coming along. You know, he, he didn't get through spring, he didn't do a whole lot in spring ball and this fall camp, he's finally put the pads on and he's moving around and we're, we're loading him up on reps. And he's a guy that probably played six, 700 snaps last year at Utah State. So he's a guy we're gonna need and he's a veteran. He's played a lot of football and he's a tough physical guy. So he, he's been doing really good too as well. What, what, you know, there's been so much talk about the defense and, and guys taking steps and positions taking steps and all that. What, how, how much of a role do you think that how much importance falls on your guys for that, to, to elevate this defense to that next level? I mean, it, well, do they have that pressure on their shoulders? Do, I, do I like wouldn't that? call it pressure, but they know we lost a lot of, we lost the majority of our starters up front last year, and it all starts up front. And for us to be effective and to have success defensively, the guys are going to have to be stout. They're going to have to do a good job. They're going to have to be disciplined. And if we do a good job of keeping offensive linemen from climbing up to the next level and let our linebackers in, we've got a bunch of people back in the secondary, let those guys run, we can be successful. I wouldn't say it's pressure. Yeah. It's just every day saying, just, we just got to do our job. Sure. And, and, and that's what the guys have been doing. And, and do you feel like as far as the whole defense, I know, I know this isn't for you to speak on necessarily, but it, is that the idea across the board on defense, you think, for, for your, your defense to take that next step and, and be, I guess, better than it was last year? I mean, is it just that do your job mentality? Yeah, that, absolutely. That's what it is. And it, it's 10 guys can do their job. One guy can bust an assignment and it's, it's 60 yards sure. down the field. And that's the mentality we, you know, in the, in, in the spring, we had a self cut up. We saw all our mistakes and it's one or two guys on every single play. Well, at the end of the day, that adds up. So if guys just focus in, and we always don't try to be Superman, just be Clark Kent, do your job. And that's what guys have been buying into. Does that approach help take some of the pressure off? It does, because everyone wants to be a playmaker and make plays. Yeah. But when you force the issue, that's when mistakes happen. When you play within the scheme of the defense, everyone has success and then we're all good. Is there, is there anyone that's best at doing that? I mean, it's, it's not natural for everybody. Like you just said, everybody wants to run around and, and make the big highlight play. And I, there, there's a lot of guys that, I, Everyone's trying to do their job. That's what we've been harping. Sure. And if, if you're not, right, there's someone else will. So guys are really buying into that gotcha. for sure. Tyrell, last year, mm -hmm. Jeremy Robinson kind of split snaps, got yeah. some snaps. 
Mm -hmm. Is he ready to be that main guy this year? Yeah, he, he is. And he's taken, he's a quiet guy and he's really taken on that leadership role. And he does it good. He does it. He's not a yeller, not that kind of leader, but he's more by example, but he's been opening up being more verbal because he's been here a long time, you know, more than longer than any of us. And he's got a lot of knowledge. He's really sharp, really technical player. So he's bringing some of the young guys and some of the new guys along and he knows it's, it's, it's he feels it's his time and uh, he's going to take that. He, even last year, not being a starter, he still played starter reps. So he, he has the experience and we're gonna lean on him for that. You got some new specialists in. What are your thoughts on the guys on special teams? Yeah, everything we do in this program, Coach Lipe always says we're gonna compete. And, and same thing, we needed to be better in, in the specialist area. So obviously we brought in competition and uh, Damon's been doing a great job and Graydon's done a great job Reese he you know he was our guy the last couple of years he's improving and we've got two good snappers one towards ACL last year and and now he's back and then Amory was the backup and so all those guys are competing and it's improving the room and obviously Seth Keller and Charlie and then Owen those guys I mean we're charting everything those guys are competing and it's 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 good it's good competition it's making everyone better What's your experience with Reeves been like? Uh, he's from a different world, isn't he? Yeah, but he, he he's a funny guy. Like, he fit in. You know, he's an older kid. Uh, he's fit in pretty good, pretty seamlessly. And he's he's taken coaching, and uh, it, it's new. a lot of it is new to him, but he, he's also an older guy, too. So for a guy to kind of pack up his bags and fly across, you know, from a completely different country and, and, and get here and just fit in with all the guys, he's been awesome. What, what was the process early on that, that you guys had to go through to, to make sure he felt comfortable and, and had that room to kind of adjust? I'm serious, not a whole lot. Really? He, he showed up here and in our first meeting with all the newcomers, he came in, he introduced himself in front of the team and he had the, you know, he had the accent, everyone started laughing, he smiled and really he's fit in. Guys, guys love him and you know, you just, you always want to learn from someone that comes from a different place. So guys are, Guys enjoy him. He's, he's a good guy. Lance said the other day that he'd been extremely impressed by his, his physical ability and all that. Yeah. Maybe even more than he thought. Yeah, he's a pretty good athlete. Game. He's got good size. He's a strong kid. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, you know, you never know when you're doing everything via Zoom until right. a guy shows up here on campus. And we, when he showed up, he was put together and very, very mature. So that's important. Yeah. yeah. Would you have, a like, a timeline you'd want to make your decision on which specialist you're going to go with? Like, you know when you won't have the decision made if you haven't made it. Yeah, we, we still have a couple weeks here. Not not necessarily. Um, it, it's get it's getting a little bit down to the wire, but we still have some time and not just necessarily a scrimmage format, but practice every day. Those guys are, are, are doing a good job and we've got really good special teams analysts, Coach Miller, Coach Barton, and then Coach Snyder obviously. So got a lot of input. We're putting all our ideas together and, and we'll get the, the best guys ready and have the best guys out there. Yeah, how, how helpful has Coach Schneider been? He's awesome. I mean, a guy 30 plus years experience and, you know, it's it's funny sitting on this end because, you know, you hear about the guy when you're, you know, going against them and he, he's wealth of knowledge and that, that's been definitely beneficial for us. Just little things here and there and it's been great. I think last year you guys split up some of the duties with different coaches taking different units. Is that still how you guys would handle yeah, it? Yeah, so, so we're all still splitting it up. Obviously, I oversee everything and then input from Coach Snyder and the other analysts as well. Um, so it's it keeps everyone involved and that, that's kind of the way we've done things. And, you know, it's it's helpful for sure. We 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 think it's it's the best way to have if each coach is involved in each special team while well, their position whether it's Coach Peterson, he's coaching punt return, while well, all those DBs are really bought into it because he, he's the lead coach on that unit, and we found that very successful for us. Who are the lead coaches in the, the other spots? So I work kickoff. Coach Simpson works with punts. Coach uh, Wallace, he's kick return, and then Coach Peterson's punt return. Is that a draw and straws sort of thing, or is there expertise that each guy has that, that it's, falls in there? Or? It's, you know, uh, Coach Simpson's been a coordinator, special teams coordinator. Coach Peterson's been a special sure, teams yeah. coordinator. Coach Wallace has been a <laughs> special teams coordinator. So we've all done it. We've all done all of them. So, yeah, I guess I get first dibs, and then yeah. everyone else is, you know, they're – Coach Peterson, and he got to pick. He picked punt return. Coach Simpson gets stuck with punt. So we do that every day. Yeah. Cool. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank you. Thank you.